Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This one is my marathon digital price predictions. Uh, this is going to be for the years 2025 to 2026. I don't know the exact time frame. I'm making a very, very bullish, very, very bullish prediction, and I'm going to base my uh, my equity and, and basically my life around this this thesis that I, I'm very, very, very absolutely confident in. Um, going forward. And, and I'm going to talk to you guys about that because because there's some really serious things that we need to discuss and about how I came up with these valuations, what what my plan is and, and what I'm going to do forward. Because this isn't going to be some video that just fades into the dust. This, this stock is going to go up. This stock is going to go up to what I say it's going to go up to. I don't know which range it's going to fall under. That's why I give it a bear and a bull case. But realistically, this is this this stock, in my opinion, is the number one way to cycle your money higher um, in the next two years. I, I genuinely don't think that there's going to be something that is easier to do that I understand personally more than this. So let's just get into this. Um, my bearish price target is $150 um, for Marathon Digital, uh, roughly a 10x from where it's at right now. Uh, we'll give it that. And that would insinuate, um, based off my numbers, based off of where I'm pulling these predictions to to hold these valuations, right? Because every stock is a hold the valuation. It's there is institute there's investors and there is traders. It's very important to note that their traders move the price and the investors hold the price, right? Okay, they're the bounds and. and the traders are the liquidity, right? So giving that said, my bearish prediction on Bitcoin would be $300,000. Um, Marathon Digital holds over 25,000 Bitcoin. Uh, by the time 2025, 2026 rolls around, I am just assuming that they hold 30,000 Bitcoin, okay? I also am going to say that they have a price to book value of five. In a bull market of Bitcoin, when Bitcoin is going up, there is no excuse for this to have a price to book of 1.9. You see in the past five years, every time Bitcoin, if you look back to when it made an explosive run, whether it was in towards new all time highs, which it was here, which is when it had the biggest explosive runs, um, or whether it was back in early 2024 when it was pushing up towards 40K, um, Marathon Digital made some expressive uh, price to book movements, right? This makes a lot of logical sense when you understand that there's a lot of shares shorted, there's a high turnover percentage on the stock, and so it's very easy to get manipulated when people want to leverage on, and it's very easy to get manipulated when people leverage down. So 300,000 is my lowest point I, I believe Bitcoin's going to be in the next two years because the bull part of the cycle for any person with a cognitive IQ will understand that 2025 and 2026 are the bullish years for Bitcoin, and 2026 is your super bull or maybe consolidation turning into bear um 2025 is just full bull right and so the second my high prediction in terms of bitcoin would be to uh two million dollars in terms of this cycle now that does seem a little bit excessive but i'm going to pull up a chart here um off my twitter page that i i think i've just uh saved just to show you that that when you lay these over um in terms in terms of other types of uh bull markets you'll see that it's very very possible this this one right here um this is where we are this is the overlay of the each cycle relative to having um based on the current price right and so this is how the last halvings would have played out obviously there's exceptions there's different environments that make up these uh different types of valuations but two million dollars is by far in the in the realm of possibilities in terms of a Super Bowl cycle. What thesis would you have to be? Well, the government would then be putting Bitcoin on their balance sheet, um, on their Federal Reserve as a store of value, and, and that's when the price could peak up towards two million if a lot of countries start leveraging on. I do believe that price to book value of Marathon Digital could then be up in towards 10, right? And, and that's just a simple, provided they have 300 million shares, uh, still and they don't dilute shares more to, to change their Bitcoin holdings. They own 30,000 Bitcoin, Bitcoin's at 2 million. I believe they could be at $2,000 a share at a 10 price to book ratio. Now, would I be issuing this a sell? Absolutely, because I also have a cognitive IQ that understands that there's also a bearish cycle to these bull cycles that come down, that scare people out. Um, but every single time it picks up more investors and people get more knowledgeable about what's going on. Why? Because they put their own money, their own time, their own effort into this. So they're going to have some type of 
care some type of emotional holding value um, to the success of Bitcoin. And that's what's progressively getting greater. Okay. And so when we roll back over to this price to book value, it, it, even in the past six months, you're trending lower from these higher price to book valuations, which we'd seen in the past. By no means do I not expect this to get up into these higher price to book valuations. I do. I truthfully do. And so when you roll over to the chart, when you start to pull up a chart in terms of see how it looks, <clears throat> let's take Mara here, um, already down into the red, which is absolutely crazy um, in terms of a move, we have to understand what is going on in the stock market. And so I'm just going to pull up the this list actually over here. Uh, to give a better representation of what I wanted to see. Um, let's do Marathon Digital here. And this is the order flow. I've talked about this in a video before. Um, but basically, a, a red means, a red colored order coming in means that somebody sold down to the bid. A green means they bought up to the ask. And a gray means it was an equilibrium. Both people agreed on the price point. And this is very important to note because this is how the price moves. Okay, The price is always exactly where it needs to be to have 50-50 odds. The purpose of the price of any stock at any current time is to make sure that there's 50% of the people buying and 50% of the people selling. Just because the stock may be at a bad price or a way too high of a price or way too low of a price doesn't mean the individual who came to that thesis also has the money to influence the price um, in the direction that they want, right? Otherwise, they'd be doing that. They'd be selling down. They'd be selling at whatever price if they thought it was overvalued or buying at whatever price if it was undervalued, right? And they'd be holding their shares until it came to a valuation that they thought appropriate. And that is very, very important in terms of long-term investing because the purpose of investing is you are exchanging an asset um, and somebody else is on the other side of that trade. Somebody else is losing. And so you have to understand that the reason why there's these fluctuations is because there's so many people getting in and getting out. So your time frame and what time frame you're looking at is the most important thing. Okay? And that is why when we look at these option markets, um, they're important to understand where people want the stock to go. Why? Because people are, are, are ultimately selling the, these call options, selling these put options. And so... Every time that happens, there is liquidity throughout time. And so what the goal of the person who sold these options are is to contain the volatility of the stock within a bound range until there is new money. The reason why stocks either move or don't move is because there is new people wanting to buy or sell the asset. And I believe that the 26% short interest on Marathon Digital, which is unparalleled to anyone in their sector, let alone unparalleled to anyone in the stock market, is a very, very, very key factor that is going to help this stock move up and move up very, very, very drastically. They are the leader in Bitcoin held. They are the leader in Bitcoin mined. They are the leader in innovative tech in this sector. And I believe that the story of wanting to be a miner, wanting to be the, the capital output of a financial institution is going to happen. I, I don't see a sector um, that has the amount of potential as the crypto mining sector has. Realistically, the story and the thesis behind what could come here is 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 way greater than it's being portrayed to think. There's only there's few there's billions of dollars in, in, in this in this sector, which means there is people willing to allocate a large amount of capital into hoping that this works. I truly, truly believe that the amount of people who want to uh, own a mining grid, which is, which is just power, it, it is the most nece fundamental necessity in, in how you would do anything, okay? And and so I, I, I think what is going to happen is in once either Trump gets elected or Bitcoin breaks out of all time highs, some other country starts buying Bitcoin, the time of understanding people will start to understand what they have to do. And that's when the FOMO starts to kick in because the biggest fear to me would be to not own Bitcoin, would be to not own fiat currency because there is that risk of your dollar devaluing into affinity. Bitcoin is the greatest store of value that there there is, that we have made yet as humans. There, there's not going to be something that can hold their value to a better rate because People are going to use Bitcoin. It is a very, very good technology. Cryptocurrency is very, very usable technology. It's integrating into our, into our future, but it's 
picking up pace. You lay down the blueprints for all this stuff to be built. It's been built in the last four years. Now what has to happen, new people, countries have to then apply themselves to gain this type of um, equity in, in that asset class, okay? And you look at different companies. I wanna, I wanna show you, for example, in terms of what I was talking about, um, in terms of liquidity, which is which is the most important thing of this stock. It is the, the simple fundamental on how stocks go up. It is a supply and demand. It is how many people wanna buy and how many people wanna sell. And, and it is important in terms of how many people wanna invest and hold because that is too a crucial factor. But what you see here is if we go back, let's just say GameStop. We can take GameStop, for example. And we look here and we look at the turnover and that's a 1.94% turnover, yet the percent range is 10%, okay? So low turnover, high move, okay? And then we go, we can take another company like Arm Holdings here, 0.68% turnover, 7.64% range. Very high range, low turnover percentage once again. Let's use Apple, for example, to kind of gauge a very, very well-known stock relativity um, to, to kind of correlate these things because everything is a correlation positive or a negative correlation and our job isn't to understand where the price point is today but what the price point is going to be tomorrow or whatever time frame we are on and, and if we look on smaller time frames we're looking at smaller kind of things where is the market heading where is the five minute telling us to go what are these smaller indicators telling us but it's very easy it's much much easier for somebody who can't risk losing money um because they don't have new money to, to to kind of funnel back in and they can't lose too many trades in a row forecast where stocks are going to be in the future one two years out right that's a good time horizon no stocks just going to go infinitely up for 10 years but one to two years of cycling a stock is very very profitable well well you buy in with puts and you sell out through calls okay and so click on apple here we see 0.24 percent turnover 1.78 percent range and so lower turnover um, the greater the turnover typically results in a, a higher range. Why? Because more shares are being traded, being exchanged. They're willing to lose their position or gain a position relative to the price, which just is volatility and, and how much a stock is, is willing to contract or expand. And when we move over to Marathon Digital, we see a, a discrepancy in in what is going on. We see 11.44% turnover, yet a 9.17% range. Now, by no means is a 9.17% range uh, small. That's a very large range. But 11.44% turnover, you rarely even see this in, in terms of an earnings report. Um, it, it, it tells us that lots and lots of people are trading it. This is what we call loose shares. And, and these loose or liquid shares are very important because if they can be eaten up and swallowed up within minutes, within hours, within days, well, it the, once the, the loose shares are saturated from the system, you need to accommodate the price if there is an oncoming demand to free up those shares. Most people who aren't trading this stock, are holding this stock very, 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 very long. They're looking for 50, 60, 70, 80, upwards of $100. And that is the important part. This is the difference between Marathon Digital and other stocks on the stock market. And just to show you, just to prove my thesis of a stock with a high short interest, you get growth in the good way, valuation does not matter. It can start picking up pace with a low turnover percentage at a higher price point. Look at Upstart Holdings here, ladies and gentlemen. Take a look at the 6.43% turnover, low percentage range, but we take a look at the chart, you look at the daily chart, it has been in a nice channel flow up. Why? Because people sure are still cycling their money in and out every single day, but the net order flow is an accumulation of shares. Very, very evident, very, very, very obvious, and important to understand that there's still 30 million shares sold short, which is almost 30% of all the shares. Not only that, but you can also see where, where these shares are getting traded. OTC, OTC. These, this is typically sell down, selling pressure, um, people selling shares that they don't own. And, and there's a whole uh, different kind of methodology we could talk about in terms of OTC versus NASDAQ, but it's not too, too important. It's just important to understand that 
environments change, things change, stories change, and supply and demand is the most crucial thing in terms of a, a stock moving up or down. If people no longer want to own it, no longer want to hold it, well, it's very, very easy for the stock to, to go down for months, if not years, if there is a negative outflow, a contraction of money out of the company, okay? And so I believe that there's no reason why the price to book value of Marathon Digital won't reach heightened rates like it has in the past. That is basically a check mark. I don't know if it's gonna be four price to book or if it's gonna be 14 price to book. But in that range, I expect it to be a much, much higher price to book value than it is now. I expect that only to happen if Bitcoin is going in the upwards direction, okay? So price to book goes up only when Bitcoin goes up. That makes a lot of logical sense because if Bitcoin is going up, the demand of people wanting to own a stock that is being sold short is going to be very, very, very great. If a Bitcoin is in a consolidation period, what do, you, what do you expect? Well, you would logically expect that because Bitcoin is consolidating, leverage would be coming off throughout time. It's a very, very logical thing to assume, to predict. And what I'm logically assuming and logically predicting is that Bitcoin is going to go up based off of the halving cycles, based off of other countries and companies having a demand for the utility of Bitcoin, right? And so I believe that this stock is is realistically poised to have the best gains on the market. There's leverage plays, but I, I ultimately don't think that there's going to be a leverage play better than Marathon Digital, possibly Clean Spark, and I own some of them too. But these miners are going to be the, the forefront of, of a new sector being integrated and built into our countries, into our societies. That And that's a rare thing because it only happens every so often, every decade or so, a technological advancement comes in, new companies spur up, some fade out, and some capitalize on that growth. And I believe that these miners are going to be those companies, okay? Bitcoin is just in a whipsaw phase, a consolidation phase. I couldn't tell you logically um, who's selling Bitcoin here because those aren't logical people. Those are likely traders. This is governments. This is just, it's, it's has to be done. Silk Road, FTX, they're just, they're paying um, uh, creditors out. That's just how it has to happen. And that's just life. There, there's people do stupid things and, and you have to accept it because you can't change how, how they think in, until you show them how to properly think. And Bitcoin, I think, is going to be very, very good for society because it is going to show a lot of people how to think logically. It is a great representation of supply and demand. It is a great representation of advancements of technology. And it takes away the power of individual governments printing money to whatever extent that they need to to fulfill their goals. If these countries actually had logical goals and did things smartly and managed their money properly, we wouldn't need this. We, we, we still would in terms of transacting money throughout the world. We could just use a USDT coin or US whatever, whatever coin uh, currency we want. But because countries spend more money than they have, tax more and more and more, there is a desperate need for every single human who exists to find a way to store their value. That's a thing that is real. Um, I don't know how long it's going to take. I've been expecting this to go up my whole life uh, in terms of the four years I knew about this. Um, and relatively, when I started, I think I started around this range. Um, I, I, I saw some green, but I've seen a lot of red. And, and realistically, because I've been playing a leverage play in Marathon Digital, I've seen a lot more red than green. And that's because I've been waiting for the super bull phase that just hasn't happened yet. I, I'm waiting for this break above all time highs where it goes up two, three, four, five X. Okay. And I'm calling out the systematic environment change that is different from the last cycles, from other cycles. And, and why I think that it's going to be very, very important that you own these, these miners and why I think it could hit $150 to $2,000. It, it, it makes a tremendous amount of logical sense. You've seen companies, NVIDIA, Tesla, 
they they were billion dollar companies and now they're trillion dollar hundred of billion dollar companies the same thing is set to happen for marathon digital set to happen for these miners this exa hash this this logical turn turn energy on when it's cheap turn it off when it's ex it's expensive that is very important for society these companies are doing it it's going to be rewarded in the stock market those people who are who are panicking out selling out they don't have the money to to kind of be in it they were never a long-term holder they were looking for a quick gain those people who understand what this this really is how this works we're going to cycle the money off of uh these stocks till the end of time realistically okay and, uh, because we just have a iq of comprehension that is going to be valid okay and so this is a 20 minute video i'm sorry i've been knocking on this for uh for a little bit long this is my last video um what my plan is is once we break above 27 i see a point of no return above 30 i see it getting a, a very explosive above this kind of 200 moving average once this gets above into this 27 dollars range i'm going to start by selling one two covered calls a week if we lose the shares, I'm going to use that capital to buy in cash covered puts. I'm going to be selling ca covered calls to, to reduce um, equity in the position as it goes up. I'm not losing these shares uh, for more than I paid for them. I paid about 25, 26 bucks for them. So I don't mind losing them past 27, even if it's been months, because this is going to give me cash flow and revenue. With these 2,700 Marathon Digital and 600 Clean Spark shares, I'm going to be just selling, selling the shares in terms of covered calls and using cash covered puts to enter. I am willing, because of this thesis, because of this bear case thesis of $150, this is going to allow me to easily sell in and easily buy in, sell out and easily buy in positions of this company. I have no problem buying this company at 30, 40, 50, $60, but it needs to be a reasonable thing in the market to do at that time. And for that to happen, I don't know at what point $30 in time is going to be the $30 fair value, right? I can tell you it's undervalued right now because I'm looking three, four months into the future, seeing a Donald Trump presidency. Um, and, and even if it's not, I'm still seeing a demand for, oh, shoot, it's Kamala Harris taxing us on everything. Don't move to the state. Sell all your stocks. Buy crypto because what else are you going to buy if you can't own assets because you just get unrealized gains, capital gains tax, right? So no matter what happens, the best thing for Bitcoin is time. And so what do I have a lot of? Time, right? And, 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 and realistically, my time horizon is 25, 26 because otherwise after that, there's going to have been a cycle up. There's not going to be, there's not, not going to be a Bitcoin cycle. It's not just going to go up to a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand dollars in the next five years. It's going to rip up. It's going to get everybody in and it's going to cycle you back down. And the NPCs are going to buy up here and then we're going to sell and then we're going to buy back at the lows. That's just what's going to happen, right? I, I, I can't stop it from happening because I'd have to be thinking for every single human to prevent this retardation from happening. That's the truth. And I don't want to do that. That's not my problem. I'm going to play off of the idiocracy of the market. And, and that's what everyone's goal should be to do. Marathon Digital is a proven company. It's proven to hold value. It's going to be the number one leverage Bitcoin play to hold in this upcoming cycle. And even if it's not, it's going to go up with Bitcoin and we're going to have a high amount of premium, a high amount of options that we are going to be able to buy and sell. This is an extremely long compression um, pattern. You don't see volatile stocks consolidate in this type of range in terms of a 14 to 27 dollar 30 dollar range uh, for as long as it has there is a huge a huge amount of people who have shorted this are still short this stock and sure they could cover within a few days but that it doesn't mean that new people aren't shorting what needs to happen for this company to genuinely go go up is there needs to be people who are willing to hold this for a a decent amount of time and that's only going to happen when Bitcoin's in its bullish phase and the shorts need to not reshort the shares. They need to cover their shares and not resell them back in because there's no one to sell them to. OK, there's no share or there's no shares to sell. So um, I'm making this prediction 
call me just an idiot if you will um, this video is going to probably get very very few views um, in, in terms of the beginning time but I really hope that you can see here down here 2024 3 p.m. August 29th um, that maybe in August 29th of 2025 we're looking at $180 marathon digital after I just 10x and it's not going to be just a 10x of money I, I hope you understand that if this stock 10x's that I'm going to probably 20 to even possibly 100x my money because I'm going to have cycled in and out through options with that time, okay? That's the thesis. Um, that's what I'm telling you right now. I, I, the, I would, If I were playing any other stock, I'd just be selling call options. If I lost the shares, I'd just be selling put options back in. I'm just so afraid and so fearful of, of the FOMO of not owning Marathon Digital and just the fact that I could have sold these calls way, way, way back here when I started to accumulate these positions, sell these calls, sell these puts, whatever. I'm holding my shares until the price point gets well, well above 30 bucks, 27 bucks, and that's when I'm going to start to edge out, and then there will be a cycle up, and there's always going to be a dip because there always has to be a contraction to an expansion. Um, we will play that equilibrium line, and I'm just going to show you just one more stock just to understand what I'm talking about in a smaller term time frame because this was a whipsaw today. This had a stock at earnings, okay? This is a five minute candlestick. This first five minute candlestick was a 5.7% candlestick on 1.24 million volume. Now, you see the other five minute volumes, 50,000, 60,000 shares. So there's a lot, a lot of shares. This is a price people sold down here, but there's more people who wanna buy than sell right so the price has to keep going up until more people want to come out of the stock that's just basic 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 knowledge you look at these liquidities you look at the price change movement turnover and price range and you you, you understand what story is happening you start to understand is this stock trying to get pinned to an option premium point for example a whole number right if there's a lot of call options sold at $280, right, for this week, it's likely going to be that, sure, the price could get off of that $280 range, but it's going to try and contract towards $280 because the equilibrium, the point at which the institutions are satisfied for where the price is at, which is the people who determine the money where, the, where they're allocating their capital to, want the price there, okay? So that is my la logic. That is, that is my thesis for the year and a half going forward. Um, I'm going to try and accumulate as many shares as possible because I want to be an owner. I want to own this stuff. Um, and, and I believe that the option premium is, is going to get out of hand. I think it's just going to get stupid. It's going to get GME stupid uh, because every single person is going to want to be a part of a Bitcoin miner, a Marathon Digital, a Clean Spark. And there's just going to be simply a supply and demand crunch that happens. Okay, so stay tuned, guys. We'll see if I'm wrong or I'm right uh, in the next year, year and a half to come. But there's just a 0% chance I'm going to be wrong. It just ain't happening. Okay, so...